In this video, we're going to start to take a look at how we can store data using the data section of our program. And I'm going to introduce this in a simple way of just showing you how to store some numeric data. And we're just going to talk through some of the ways that we can interact with that data, how we can load it into registers to use it, and how the declarations generally work and the different sort of data types that are associated with these declarations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating a simple program. I'm going to call it data.s. And in this program, I'm going to declare first a section for data, like we've done in the, uh, in the previous video as well. And what we need to do when we declare a variable or any sort of data in this section is we need to provide three different things. We need to provide a name for the data. We need to provide the type of the data, which is actually really just the size, like how many bytes we're going to allocate to this data. And then we give it an initial value of some sort. So for instance, I can create a data section called num, and then I want to decide how many bytes I want to accommodate or uh, associate with this uh, data. So for instance, db would give me one byte of data. db stands for define byte. So it would give me one byte in size, so eight bits. I could do dw, which is declare word, which will give me two bytes in size or 16 bits. dd is going to be four bytes, so it's going to be 32 bits dq is 8 bytes, so that's going to be 64 bits. And then dt is 10 bytes, or 80 bits. So those are some of the common ones that we would see. Now you'll notice that we're really just manipulating how many bits and bytes are associated with this variable. We don't actually have anything that's talking about like what data is actually stored in here. And the reason being is because every single piece of data that is stored is actually just binary data, right? So there's no sort of uh, distinguishing between any different types. So like, you know, it could be an integer, it could be a character, could be a string. There's no real way to distinguish that. We're really just distinguishing it by how big the actual space and memory is. So as an example, in this case, let's declare a uh, DD, which is a double word. So 32 bits or four bytes of data. And let's say I want to give this a value of five. So that's my initial value. Right now, we've declared some memory, and that memory exists on the stack, so it's in the RAM or stack memory of the application itself, and it's given a value of 5, and 32 bits are allocated to that value 5. So we've put aside 32 bits of data, it has a value of 5 in it, and that's associated with the value num. So that's, that's the idea of what we're doing here. And now from here, we could do our you know, text section like we normally would, and we can start to declare all the different components of it. So I can put in my global start label, and I can put in my start. And uh, what we'll do here is we'll set up a uh, system call for exit like we did before, just to exit the program. And inside of the status, which is ebx, I'm going to try to put the value of this number. So let me show you sort of like the first approach that you might try with this. Like let's say that we move into eax the value one, and then we could try just saying move into ebx the value num, and then interrupt adh. Now let me show you what happens when you do that. When I save this, and when I go through and I actually uh, compile this, so I'll do my nasm uh, command to uh, assemble everything together, and then we'll do our linker here ld. And from here, we can run our data executable, and then we can echo out that exit code. And you can see the value is zero. Now the value should have been five. So what happened here? Well, we need to actually take a look at each step of this program. And a good way to do that is using the GDB debugger. So if I go into GDB data, what I could do is I could do the following. I could say layout ASM, and this will put me into the assembly layout. From here, I'm going to add in a breakpoint for underscore start. So I'm just going to break at the start of the application. That way, when I run, what happens is it starts at the start, or it stops at the start point, right? And from here, I can just sort of step through the instructions one by one. But something that's even useful to look at is just the way that these instructions are laid out. This is the really disassembled raw version of our application. It's not got no sort of abstraction to it. This is just what is happening from the instruction point of view. And what you'll notice is that we move one into EAX, that's the first instruction there, and that makes sense, right? But then the second instruction moves the value 804A000 into EBX. And that might seem a little weird, right? What's going on there? Well, let me show you exactly what's happening. So if I type in step I, it will step me through to the next instruction. We'll type in step I again to get to the final instruction. 
At this point, let's see what is stored inside of the register EBX. If I type in info registers EBX, you could see that it has that value that I said, right? 804A000. So you might be asking, well, what is this value? What's going on here? The answer to that is that the value num is actually storing the address of the data for that variable. So it's storing the location on the stack where the number five is located. So it's giving us the address, not the actual value itself. And I can actually demonstrate this to you in a bit more detail. Let me show you. So if I nano into uh, data.s, what I could do is I can move, um, well, actually, we already have the address stored in EBX, so we can actually just do this directly. We don't have to change the program at all. Let me go back into GDB. We'll do our layout ASM. We'll break start. We'll run. We'll step through. Now, at this particular point here, what I could do is the following command. I could say x over x EBX. And in this case, oh, sorry, I think I have to do it with the uh, percent sign. Or maybe it's the dollar sign. Sorry, yeah, it's the dollar sign that we have to do it with. So if we do x over x and the dollar sign EBX, well, what will happen is it will print to me what is located on the stack at the location EBX. So you can see here that it shows this is the address here, the 804A000. And here's the value that's currently there. So this is the value 5. So this actually is showing you the stack memory. So it shows you the address as well as the value. So that's always a helpful command in GDB to use. So at this point, you should see clearly now that the address that is stored there, the 804 address, has the value 5 in it. So the only question that we have left here now is, well, how do we get 5 out of that address? And the answer to that question is we just have to modify our program slightly. What we do is we put num in square brackets like this. What that does is it creates a different type of reference. It says, rather than moving the address into the register, go to that address, get the value that's stored there, and move that into the register instead. That's what the square brackets will do for us. Let me demonstrate that that actually works. So we'll just go ahead and we'll assemble and link and run. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to echo out that return address or the, the status code, right? And it says five, right? So you can see that that actually is doing what we think it is. Now, let me show you in the debugger what changed. So we'll go into um, GDB for data, we'll lay out ASM, we'll break at start and we will run. And you can see now the key difference here is there's no dollar sign in front of the 804, right? So what that's doing, instead of actually getting that literal address and putting it in EBX, what it's doing is it's getting the thing located at that address and putting it into EBX. And of course, we could step through and we can see that that is the case. Even though we've already seen it in the status code, it's good practice to do this. So info registers EBX. And you can see it does actually have the value 5. So this gives you a bit of an idea of how we can work with variables and data in our assembly programs. So just to sort of review, again, you need to give it a name, you need to give it a size. So, you know, whether it be a one byte, two byte, four byte, eight byte, you have to give it some sort of size, and then you're going to give it a value. And then to load it, you use these square brackets here. Now, in understanding this, there's a lot of different intricacies that occur with this. Um, a lot of them related to the size of the data itself. We need to be very particular about the size of the data that we're declaring, and as well, just working with different types of data. So at this point, you should have a pretty good idea of the basics of data and how to work with it. In the next few videos, I'm going to walk you through some special types of data and just get you thinking about how we can work with different types of data and the different ways that we accomplish this. So that's what we'll take a look at in the next few videos. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.